Only the two passages, but in the two passages, I'm picking a verse H. From the one we read in Mark 16, I want to concentrate on verse 17. And from what we read in uh, Psalm 23, I want to concentrate on verse 6. Mark 16, 17 says, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. And it went on and on and on with uh, the things they're going to do because signs are following them. In Psalm 23, verse 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The only thing common to the two verses is the word follow. Signs follow. Goodness and mercy follow. And so, if signs follow, they, 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 it's, it does not rest on the signs. It rests on the person that the signs are following. They follow. Follow means they wait. They follow as we move. So, goodness and mercy to follow. All the days of the life, they follow. As we follow instructions. And so we're somewhere and people were crying about the, the fact that we don't see signs and wonders. And if you also go on every mountain, you see people gathering together to pray. They are not having enough of goodness and mercy. They pray for goodness, they pray for mercy. The church is crying out for signs and wonders. Where we have a little bit of sign and wonder, we, we, we celebrate it and over hyperbolize it. it. When some people have a bit of goodness and mercy, we celebrate them as if they are special. But these things that we have mentioned, signs, which the church wants, goodness and mercy, which individual wants, they all follow. And that is calling for a matter that we should look at succinctly. They follow. If we're going to do it dramatically, if I stand and I ask you to stand behind me and ask you to follow, your ability to move depends on something. I move. If I don't move, the person following me is stuck. If I stay and I do not enter, they follow me. If I enter into a fair place, Goodness and mercy follows me there. If I enter into another place for crusade, signs and wonders follow me. I determine where there are going to be signs and wonder. I determine where there are going to be goodness and mercy. So let's look at these signs and wonder twins, signs and wonders. Twins, signs and wonder follow those who preach the gospel. They follow. And signs, goodness and mercy, they follow people who follow instruction. So friends, all I want to share today is basically that these things follow. Maybe the reason the church is not seeing signs and wonders is because we are stuck. And why we be cry the lack of signs, signs and wonders in church? Let us cry for the signs and wonders that are wasting. For they are waiting. Signs and wonders are waiting on instructions. For you to move. Now I have been around the beat. And let's talk about signs and wonders first. I've been around the beat. I've traveled the beat. And I can say with all authority. That I've not seen as much signs. In the church. Within the walls of the church. As I've seen on the field. I love to tell people. About what happened to me somewhere in Sapele. That was outstanding. I've seen people delivered. When we are on the mission field. I've seen things that will make you know that indeed the scripture is real. Well, in the church, we don't expect signs and wonders. Actually, it is wrong of us to expect signs and wonders in the church. Because we have already seen the greatest sign, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and we know exactly what he has done. And that is the greatest miracle God can do for us. He doesn't need to convince us. We are convinced already. We believe in him. We are saved already. We know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So he doesn't have to come to church to convince us. He blesses us. I do not think that Christians should wait for miracles. 
I think they should wait to be blessed. We've been blessed, we've been blessed already. But miracles belong in the marketplace. There is where we have people who do not believe. People who need to be convinced. I think God is at the ready, when we are before unbelievers, He's at the ready to show them things that will make them believe. So if we stay in church, there are people there clapping, people there who know the Lord already. Why should God start to do miracles among us who are believers? We believe already. He's training us. He's discipling us. The focus of God in the church is to disciple us and uh, bring us to the image of Christ. He's not there to convince us. But in the marketplace, where unbelievers are, is there to move in their situations? Yes. Ask yourself this question. How many miracles did Jesus do among his disciples? I didn't see any. I, didn't, I don't think they don't have problems. Maybe they had challenges. But Jesus did not do any miracles among his disciples. No. Except for the time he went to the house of Peter and he healed Peter's mother-in-law of fever. Immediately so that she can cook for him. But in the marketplace, he did a lot of miracles. Everywhere he went, demons were disappearing. Everywhere he went, the sick were be made old. People were touching the hem of his garment because the crowd needs to be convinced. Jesus went, signs followed. Jesus went, wonders followed. And that is the same thing that we should do. Any one of you listening to me who really want to see signs and wonder, do what I did. Go into places where there are no believers. Go tell them about Jesus Christ. Tell them about his power. You don't need to pray about it. God comes down to confirm that indeed your testimony is true. Signs and wonders follow. Let us look at goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. Goodness is the largest of heaven. Goodness are the good things of heaven. There are houses to be built. There, 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 there are monies to be paid. There are things to be purchased. There are the many, many good goodness. When you say goodness, think. Feel free to think goodness. Think of the car you want. Think of the health you, you want. Think of all these things. Goodness and mercy. Think of forgiveness. Think of things beyond your ability that God will give unto you. Things you don't qualify for. Goodness and mercy. The Bible says they follow. But let's watch Psalm 23 closely. Who do they follow? They follow the sheep as the sheep follows the instruction of the shepherd. He leadeth me. He leadeth me on the path of righteousness. He takes me beside, beside the streams of waters. I eat the grass that he asked me to. So he controls my diet. He controls my drinking. He controls my lying down. He asked me to live in a particular lifestyle because of his name's sake. Now it's when I do that, that obedient person, going into the will of God, following the instructions of God in perfect obedience, that guy is followed by goodness and mercy. So the disobedient can go to mountains and shout, send goodness, send mercy. God is going to say, they're there with you. Goodness and mercy are there with you, waiting for you to go into my will and they will follow. God is not going to send goodness and mercy. He did. Jesus Christ of Nazareth came. He died for your sin and mine. And I say to people, and I believe it is true, that uh, there is nothing you want that will cause God to go into his laboratory again. Six days, he worked all of what you will ever need. On the seventh day, the Bible says he went into his rest. He is not coming out of his rest. For your sake, he's in his rest. And in that rest, he will stay permanently until we enter into his rest. We will join God in his rest. Our calamities will not take him out of his rest because he has done everything he has to do. All prepared. Goodness is there. Mercy is there. And they are following you. I, if you've been listening to me, you will know that you are the reason, therefore, that maybe goodness is not performing or it's not showing forth. Or mercy is not showing like it should. Perhaps it's because you are not moving. So if you want to give a title to my discussion with you today, I'll say move. Move. Don't be static. Don't be stuck. Move into ministry. Talk to non-believers. Move. When you move, then goodness and mercy, signs and wonders, will follow you. Go into the will of God. Don't be afraid of it. Follow instructions. Live like the Bible says you should live. 
And what is behind you is goodness and mercy. When you begin to follow instructions, when you begin to say no to your peculiar brand of sin, when you start to walk by the streams that the Lord indicates, when you start to eat from the grass where He leadeth you, when you start to lie down in the pastures where He has established you, then you will know that goodness and mercy are like servants. And I say this with all authority. They are like servants that wait upon you, goodness and mercy, willing to follow you into the will of the Father. Not for once, not for twice, for all the days of your life. Provided at all the days of your life, you choose to do His will. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and then you will dwell in the house of the Lord, establishing green pastures forever and ever. Amen. So the idea is, friends, let's move. Let's move. Let the church move into ministry. Then we'll start to see signs and wonders. I heard some young ones crying. We don't see our signs. We heard of what God did in times past. Don't wait on the testimony of the old. You go into the field. The field is very ripe and ready for harvest. You go there. Begin to harvest that the Lord asks you to. Then you're going to see signs and wonders. I can tell you testimonies. I've seen things and I'm still hoping to see more. The field beckons. You know why I'm quitting pastoring? One of the reasons I'm quitting pastoring is because I see we're all locked down in what we call church. All of us looking inward while the world is crying out for what we are holding in contempt within our congregations. Let's take it out. Let's take holiness from behind the pulpit. Let's put it in the marketplace. Let's take the gospel to people who are really hungry and who Christ died for. We know him already. It's time for us to make him known. Then we'll see his power. Then we'll see his signs. And we'll be glad we did. May God bless you, my friends.